everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass and if you want to learn all about the basics of off-grid electrical and what I have installed in my truck camper, then stay tuned. So I'm going to start this video off by saying I am by no means a solar or off-grid electrical system expert. Based on having this kind of system in the base camp for over three years and then working to install it here in the truck camper, I have enough knowledge to be a little bit dangerous but by no means an expert level. So at the end of this video I'll share the resources that I used as well as some resources where you can go to learn more. So the goal of this video is to really help with a basic understanding of how these off grid systems work, from charging the batteries, the different options for a battery bank, and how to send the power to all the outlets and appliances in your rig. The end design of whatever you need is going to rely very heavily on what your use is, what your rig is, if you actually need both DC and AC power, and how you plan on charging your batteries. So with that, two disclaimers. First, if you are going to do your own electrical system, make sure you have knowledge and background working with electrical or that you have somebody helping you who does. Electrical systems can be very dangerous. Second, my RV is very small. This little truck camper is 6 feet 10 inches on the bottom. Everything in here has been replaced with modern, very efficient appliances. If you have a larger rig, your design could be very different than what I have. So this is just one example of an electrical system. So let's start with the absolute basics, the battery. So the battery is really the powerhouse of an off-grid rig. It stores the power that comes in from a variety of different sources, and then it takes that power and it sends it out to all of your different plugs, appliances, and anything you need to power. So with that, you wanna decide how much battery and what kind of battery you need. How much battery you need is going to really depend on what is in your rig and what your uses. So it's really hard to have a benchmark across the board. There are a lot of different calculators out there online and see what your battery use is. For me, I've always just kind of done a trial and error. So I know what my battery usage is based on the four years that I lived in the base camp. For me, running the laptops for work, charging my Wi-Fi hotspots, running all of my appliances, I know that I need about 200 to 300 amp hours of a battery bank. Now compared to a lot of RV setups, that's pretty small. If you're a weekender or if you're a full-timer, that could vary immensely. But you really wanna have enough battery bank to store power so that if you run into a couple of days where it's raining or cloudy and you're not bringing in enough solar power, you've got enough power stored and not have to worry about going to find a plug and plugging in your RV. What type of battery you want also can vary. So there's a lot of debate between lead acid, which is the regular battery that you usually find in a camper, and lithium, which is a newer technology for RVs. I personally have always gone with lithium. The reason is I need reliable power in order to charge my work computer because I work a regular nine to five job and I can't be struggling for power. So I upgraded my Airstream and the truck camper to lithium batteries. So why have I always done lithium? First, weight savings. With the truck camper where you've gotta worry about the truck payload and then the Airstream where I had a Toyota 4Runner towing it, I always wanted to keep weight down. Lithium batteries are about a quarter the amount of weight of lead acid. You may say that's not too much, but when you need a larger battery bank, that weight just keeps adding up. Second, charging time. Lithium batteries charge faster than lead acid. So since I'm running everything off solar, I want to be able to charge that lithium battery up faster. Third, you can use, in theory, 100% of the battery, where in a lead acid, you're only supposed to use 50%. So in the base camp, for example, I had 200 amp hours of lead acid batteries. That means you could really only use 100 amp hours of it. When the batteries hit 50%, if you go below that, you start damaging them, which I did end up doing in the base camp. I didn't know that at first, and I ran those batteries down to 10, 20% pretty consistently, and then they no longer hold the same amount of power that they used to. Lithium batteries, you in theory can use all of the power that is within the battery. So if you have a 200 amp hour battery, you've got a full 200 amp hours of power to use. In order to be safe with the battery, the battery monitor will prevent you from going below, it's like five or 10% just to protect the battery, but you have a lot more power that you can use. So when I'm out camping and the weather is really bad and I start using my batteries down to 40, 30% capacity, 
Lithium can do that, lead acid can't. Another benefit is you can damage lead acid batteries by only doing partial charges. So with solar, if it's a semi-cloudy day, I might only get 10, 20% of my battery. Lead acid batteries like being used, charged fully, being used, charged fully, and if you partially charge them, it will damage them. Lithium batteries are completely fine with that. If you use it a little bit, charge it, use it, charge it, it's going to be fine. You're not going to impact the overall performance of the battery. And finally, lithium just lasts a whole lot longer. So if you're looking for a battery that is going to last you a really long time that you're not going to have to replace, lithium's the way to go. The downfall is lithium is a lot more expensive than a lead acid battery. For me, the benefits of the lithium outweigh the costs. So here in the truck camper, I have 270 amp hours of lithium Battleborn batteries. Battleborn did partner with me on this build. They sent the battery along with all the components programmed to support this battery. The reason I went with their 270 amp hour game changer battery is it's a smaller compact form than if you were gonna do three of the standard size batteries and you can put it anywhere. Lithium batteries don't need to vent, so you can build it into a cupboard, which is exactly what I had to do here. This truck camper is tiny, and I didn't have space for batteries. When I purchased it, it actually didn't have any batteries in it. So I ended up taking the small cupboard under the fridge and building in the battery. So now that you have your battery bank in order to store your power, how do you get power to your battery bank? So let's talk about charging. There are a few different ways that you can charge up a battery. In this truck camper, I have two ways. First, solar, which is my preferred method. I have 200 watts of solar up on the roof. That pulls in the energy of the sun and it takes that down through the wires to a solar controller. That solar controller will monitor how much sun is coming in and then appropriately send it down to the batteries. The second way I have to charge the batteries is through shore power. So this is very common on RVs. You might have a 15 amp, 30 amp, or 50 amp plug on the outside. You plug into an RV park, somebody's garage, your house, and you charge your batteries that way. Here in the truck camper, I went with 15 amp. The reason is, again, I don't have that much electrical draw in here, so I don't need to run any appliance off 30 amp. And those 30 amp cords are big, bulky, and require a place to store them. I don't have any exterior storage on this rig. So in the water tank cabinet here, I have a spot to store just a regular extension cord. That extension cord can take my 15 amp plug, can plug into a house, RV park, garage, really any of your regular plugs are 15 amp. So I can plug in anywhere and start charging my batteries. Now the shore power brings us to AC versus DC power. So a big difference between your RV and a house is that you have AC and DC power. In a house, they really just run off AC, which is alternating current. So your regular three prong outlets that you use, that is all AC. In an RV, you have a battery and that is where you're pulling the power directly from you have DC or direct current. And so when you're off grid and you're running just off batteries, you only have DC power coming out of the battery. So we've got AC and DC electrical and you need to have them work with each other. The way to do that is an inverter or a converter. So here, since we're talking about charging the batteries, we need to convert the AC power coming in from the house or the RV park to DC power so we can charge the battery. In order to do that, you can either use a converter which is what normally is in an RV, or you can use what I have, which is an inverter charger. So I have a 2000 watt Victron inverter charger, which does all of this DC to AC conversion for both charging and discharging the batteries. So in this case, as the shore power is coming in through the wires, the inverter charger will take that AC power, convert it to DC, take the appropriate amount of power and charge the batteries. So in my camper, that is the only two ways I can charge the battery. The third way that you can charge is from the alternator of your vehicle. You could do a DC to DC charger and that will take the power from your vehicle's alternator as you're driving and it will charge up your batteries. You can do this via an Orion or as I called it for the first three months of this project, an Orion DC to DC charger. I don't have that installed yet on here, but there are the appropriate wires in space to put that in in the future. So now that we've got charge coming into the batteries and we have a battery bank to hold all that power, we've got to have a way for that power to come out of the battery and go to the outlets in your RV. So again, here comes the AC versus DC. So the DC power coming out of your battery, the direct current, or I just think of it as 
direct power from your battery that will charge any of your 12 volt plugs or 12 volt appliances in your RV. So think of your USB plugs, your RV appliances like your furnace or potentially your fridge that have DC power on them. Those are the most efficient because they work off of DC. You don't have to convert any power and it just pulls right from the battery to run. However, Laptops require a good old AC plug. So if you wanna power your laptops, a coffee maker, or anything that uses a regular 120 volt, three prong household outlet, you've gotta take the DC power from your battery and you have to convert it back into AC power. In order to do that, you need an inverter. I have the Victron 2000 watt inverter charger, which is up in the cabinet. So that converts for the shore power AC into DC. It also inverts the DC power to the AC power to run the outlets in here. So in order to run those 120 volt outlets, I just turn the inverter on. It knows to take the power from the battery, invert it over to the 120 volt, and I can plug my laptop in and everything works like normal. Now the inverter, it does have an overhead power draw as well as there is an inefficiency of converting power from DC to AC. Therefore, if you wanna conserve battery life in your RV, you wanna run as much off DC as possible. Pulling directly from the battery is absolutely the most efficient way to go. So for me, I have the cigarette lighters that I can actually plug my USB-C charger for my laptop into, and I try to run as much off of DC power as possible. It's also something that if you have an inverter, I personally only turn it on when I need it. I know some people that have systems that are large enough to just keep the inverter on at all times. So that's something you'll want to think about in your system as well. Is it something you want to just switch on and off when you need it? Or are you using a lot of 120 volt AC outlet items on a regular basis that you want to have your inverter running on at all times? One example might be if you have a larger rig and a residential fridge, it's always going to have to run off an AC outlet. Now that we have a way to charge the batteries, hold the power in the batteries, and also use the power from the batteries within the camper, you need to have a way to monitor all of this. That is done through the battery monitor that I have installed here. There is what is called a shunt that is attached to the actual electrical wiring of the system. And then the battery monitor will run off of that and tell you what percentage your batteries have, your voltage, how much power is coming in, etc. For the inverter charger, there's also a button on the top of it in order to turn it on, put it on charge mode, or you can get a Bluetooth dongle that will plug into it. And then you control both the inverter charger and the battery monitor from your phone. The solar controller also has Bluetooth. So you just simply download the Victron app. You can see how much solar is coming in, the battery monitor, how much percent of battery you have left, the voltage, etc and then the inverter charger, you can turn it on, turn it off, and control how much power is actually coming in. In order to make all of this wiring a lot neater, I ended up using a Lynx distributor, which really is just a fancy bus bar. It makes all of your wiring connections a whole lot cleaner and just a lot easier to install. So now that we've gone over the basics of the electrical system, where can you go to find different resources to dig into some of this stuff on your own? For me, there was really three main sources. First, Explorist Life. Explorist Life is a company in Colorado that does all of these electrical installs, systems, etc. They have wiring diagrams, how-to articles, knowledge articles so you can understand how these different systems work. And this entire system was based off of their 2000 watt inverter charger wiring diagram. It tells you exactly what kind of wires to use, what kind of fuses, and Explorist Life has an installation video that actually walks you through the whole installation as well. So their resources were incredibly helpful when installing the system. The second resource I used was friends that have done these solar system installs and really talking to them about what they've seen, what they've used, what's worked for them. Most RVers you run into, if you start talking about their electrical systems, they will be very happy to tell you about any of their off-grid systems. And the third resource I used was Battleborn batteries themselves. They not only sell the lithium batteries, they also sell all the Victron components. Battleborn also offers bundles, so if you wanted to get the batteries and all the components together, you can just buy it in one big bundle, or you can give them a call and they'll walk you through what you need for your system. When I first started RVing and I had the lead acid batteries and in the base camp, I was very intimidated by all of this. It was overwhelming, confusing, and it seemed like something I would never get the grasp of. 
My lead acid batteries did not support my lifestyle nor my nine to five job. And I did run them below 50% quite often and I started damaging them. I ended up going with Battleborn because they were highly recommended by other RVers and they were at an event that I was parked at at the time. I walked up to the booth, started talking to them about my base camp, my different needs, and they helped me piece together what the system was that I should install. When I switched over to lithium batteries, living in the base camp became so much easier. I didn't have the constant worry about where I was gonna find power, if I was gonna have enough sun for the day, and it really took away one of the big stresses of traveling full-time on the road. So when I started this truck camper renovation, I knew I wanted a very similar system because I could rely on it. I had used it for years, and it was something that made my traveling a lot easier. So now that I've done one of these electrical installations, what were some of my learnings? First, laying out your component parts before you actually start wiring is really critical. For me, the only space I had to work with was the small cabinet underneath the fridge and this one above it. The battery itself can be installed anywhere, which made it pretty easy to get into the bottom of the cabinet but then you've gotta be able to run the wires from the inverter charger, the solar, and all of those different components. The battery and the inverter also wanna be as close to each other as possible. So trying to think three steps ahead on the installation and laying everything out made this a whole lot easier. Second thing, when you start working with the larger wires that you need to come off the big lithium batteries, they don't bend that easily. Some of these larger wires, they're very hard to bend. So as you're laying things out and you're planning your space, you may need more room based on the wire size than you're expecting. Third, you're gonna need a lot of special tools in order to do this. So there's different crimpers you need, different parts. I ended up using the Explorer's Life diagram and then he has an article that lists out exactly the different wires and pieces that you need. However, that article does not show you the tools that you need. I also started doing this system in early 2022 and there were still a lot of supply shortages. So this installation took over a month mostly because I was waiting on different parts to come in. So we get a little ways into the installation, realize we needed a different tool. A lot of this RV electrical stuff is not something you can pick up at Home Depot, so I'd have to order it online, wait a few days for it to come in, and then get back to work. Then we'd be working, fine, we needed a different tool. So I'll try to list out some of the tools that we use down below. That way, if you do wanna tackle this project, you can try to order those ahead of time and have them on hand. And my final learning after this whole project is that your off-grid power is very customizable in terms of what your actual needs are. For example, I don't have the DC to DC charger. Others rely heavily on that. I have the inverter. Others don't have an inverter because everything in their rig runs off DC power and they don't need the AC outlets. So just because this electrical system works really well for me, your needs may be a little bit different. If you have any questions at all on the system I have, feel free to comment below. Any of the more technical questions, I'll probably guide you to different resources as I am not an electrical expert myself and I had a lot of help getting this system in. So thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.